Hey, any rabbit lovers out there? Well, I'll show you how to make a delicious rabbit meal right after this. Well, hello, family. I'm Chef Big Will, and today I have an excellent recipe for a delicious rabbit meal. Now, you're going to need the following ingredients, herbs, as well as spices. You're going to need some chicken broth. I prefer the low sodium, as well as white cooking wine, and some olive oil. You'll also need some bay leaves. You're going to need some ground sage. You can just buy all this stuff over the counter at the regular grocery store as well as rosemary leaves, I love rosemary, and some thyme. You will also need some salt. Now, any salt will work, but I prefer the pink Himalayan salt, some black pepper, and cayenne pepper. It really gives that um in what you need. You'll need a bell pepper. We're gonna use a half of jalapeno pepper, an onion, and four cloves of garlic. And with that being said, let's get it started. First, you're gonna take your bell pepper. You're gonna dice it up, not too small, Kind of leave you know a little size on the chunks. You're going to remove the seeds from it as well as the core that's in the middle of the bell pepper. Get all that out. Get about four slices each way and leave the chunks larger. Man, you can smell that bell pepper flavor. Golly, bursting fresh. Now I'm only gonna use one half of the jalapeno pepper because peppers are real strong and you don't wanna overpower your meal. So one half of a pepper, jalapeno pepper, remove the seeds, remove the core. Now I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up real fine. Ooh, and it's burning my eyes too. Next, you'll take your onion. Just peel it real good. Both sides. Now onion and garlic gives your dish that well-rounded zesty flavor you're going to need. Cut it down the middle. About four slices each half. Not too small on the dicing. And then the four cloves of garlic. Now you want to dice the garlic rather small, as small as you can get it, or chop it, or mince it. The finer the garlic is chopped, the more flavor you have in your dish. Now I didn't catch these rabbits myself. I just gave up on hunting. I got tired of shooting at the same rabbit for two weeks, not catching anything, so I'll leave that to the professionals. I'm still game to go though, so uh, if you want to go, just let me know. Maybe I should be saying that for the guys that go hunting. If you want to take me, just let me know. <laughs> just about done here. Now, this is the rabbit. You want to allow your rabbit to soak overnight once you've cleaned it. You want to add a little vinegar as well as cold water and some salt to your water when you're soaking the rabbit overnight to get rid of that gamey taste. You know, a lot of wild animals tend to have that wild gamey taste that's really unpleasant. Just kind of cut the fat off. Crack the back there and just chop across the lower back and separate the two thighs. Now I'm simply cutting away at a lot of the uh, fat that's on the rabbit. That's really not edible in my opinion. And because these rabbits are not very large, I'm going to be preparing two. Basically, you cut a rabbit just like you would a chicken. You know, you have maybe like eight pieces. Some people stretch it out to where you can get like 10 pieces. And now for the second rabbit, but I'm gonna fast forward that. Now, once you've got your meat all cut up, 
you want to rinse it real good. Just put it in a large bowl of cold water and just stir it around until you've cleaned the meat thoroughly. You may have to rinse it a couple of times, you know, once you've used the water to uh, clean off the meat, you'll pour that water off. And then you'll fill the bowl again. Now when you're cleaning off the meat, the first thing you wanna check is the water. If the water is not clear, then you need to rinse the meat again. Now you may have to go through this process two or three or even four times before you actually see the water being clear. Like uh, that's uh, rinse number two, I believe. And once again, a third time. Yeah, that's what you want. Next, I'm placing the meat in my pressure cooker. Now, typically, you may want to use a pot or some people fry their rabbit, but I just prefer using the pressure cooker. It locks in the flavor and the food is done in a third of the time it would take to boil it, fry it, or bake it. And it, it just tenderizes the meat to perfection, too. I'm adding my broth. You can use vegetable broth or chicken broth, it doesn't matter, I prefer vegetable. Pour it all in there. A little white wine. And you'll taste that in the food, guaranteed. You'll taste that in the meat when you cook it. Next, I'm gonna add a little olive oil. Now, olive oil will keep your meat moist so that it doesn't dry out. You ever had dry turkey? Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about. Now for the peppers, onion, garlic, and jalapeno pepper. Voila. Pour it all in there. That's going to be a key factor in your broth once you've cooked your rabbit. You want to hold on to that broth because you're going to make gravy with the broth. Just pour the onion in there. Garlic, bell pepper, jalapeno pepper. Yummy. And like I said, you know, season it to your own liking, you know. Next, I'm adding some bay leaves. I'm gonna put three in there. Bay leaves have a way of controlling that wild, gamey taste that you tend to have when you're eating uh, wild, wild meat. Don't forget to remove them once the meat is cooked. Put a little ground sage in there. Cayenne pepper. I like spicy stuff. Don't go too crazy on that. <laughs> Some thyme and rosemary. Himalayan salt. Just gonna pour a little in my hand because it comes out rather fast if you're pouring it straight from the, uh, the container. Yeah, just sprinkle it around, yeah. Now I didn't use all of that salt, okay? A lot of it was still in my hand. You're gonna put black pepper in there as well. You can always add more salt if you need it later. So it's better to just 
use salt sparingly so you won't over season your food with salt. Screw the top on. And I think I'll cook this for uh, 50 minutes, you know, maybe an hour. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do 50 minutes on this. I strongly recommend you get a pressure cooker one day. It'll come in real handy. And the flavor is incredible. All right, one hour later. Now what I'm doing now is I'm removing the meat from the pressure cooker and then I'm going to remove the bones from the meat. A lot of people cook the pieces whole and they leave it whole once it's done. But rabbit meat, if you know anything about eating rabbit, rabbit has a lot of bones. It's almost like eating fish. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of bones, small bones. And you don't need any distractions when you're actually eating. So I'm going to remove the bones now. And once I get all of the meat separated from the bones, I'm going to put a nice gravy with it. Yeah. It smells awesome. Now this part may take a little time because like I said, there are a lot of bones in rabbit meat, but it's worth it to take care of it up front rather than preparing the meal and leaving it up to someone else to uh, bite into a piece and get a bone stuck in their gums. Remove those bay leaves now. That's what you have when all the bones are removed from the meat. Mmm, that delicious bell pepper. Mmm, the jalapenos and onion and garlic, you can smell it. Now that's the broth. You don't want to discard that. You're going to hold on to that because that's what you're going to make your gravy with. Man, delicious. You're going to heat your skillet as you're pouring the broth in the skillet. Now it's okay to turn the heat all the way up. And what you wanna do once you pour the broth into the skillet, just let it heat up until you get that good boil going. And then you'll just pour in the flour. Now the flour is what makes the gravy. Now I always season my flour so it has seasoning in it, okay? You can just kinda of be creative, you know, a little salt, a little pepper, you know, some garlic and paprika, whatever you wanna do, just mix that in the, uh, the flour prior to pouring it in the water and then you just want to lightly stir you know stir the um, the, the, the gravy around and uh, you're going to mash those flour lumps out while the fire is up that's going to take a couple of minutes now so just keep stirring keep stirring and the more you stir the smoother that gravy will become personally I like 30 weight gravy you have to be from the country to know what I'm talking about Keep stirring. Now you can always make more gravy by adding more flour and adding more water. Check it out now. Man, almost looks like a roux for a gumbo, huh? And you'd better believe it's seasoned to perfection. That's why you don't get rid of the broth. Now I'm placing the meat in the gravy. Man, that looks wonderful. Just spread it throughout the whole pot or pan or skillet, <laughs> whatever you use. I'm using the old cast iron skillet. Just get all the meat in there. Mm. And the meat is tender, very tender, with the flavor locked in. Just lightly cover the meat with the gravy and just keep stirring. Just make sure all the meat is covered completely. Yeah. Mmm. And we're almost ready to eat. Some of the big lumps, just take your spoon and just kind of chop over some of those lumps, you know, the meat, if it's still intact. And 
This is the way it looks on a bed of coconut rice. Mmm. Succulent. And that's how I make my rabbit. Black pepper is definitely the key to a delicious gravy. Don't forget that. Mmm. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. Chef Big Will, signing out.